Hi guys, Charlie Black 20 back again with a new video with Carlos. How you doing? Your favorite friends, huh? Your mm -hmm. favorite uh, political duel. Yeah, I didn't know. So today we are doing a video we actually thought up of today. Um, we mentioned it to each other, or I mentioned it to him. He immediately agreed because this is something that has sprung up a couple of times, and we both feel, I think, fairly strongly. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we and sure so do. what we're doing today, we have uh, mm. our handy dandy dictionaries right here. Um, we are doing capitalism and socialism. We're covering both uh, together as a political... Discussion, as always. Yes, about what we think is its place in the United States, both capitalism and socialism, whether we can agree on where it can fit in or where it cannot, um, and why we feel that way. So we're going to cover the official definition of both of them first. So. Carlos, you said you would take capitalism, so here you go. All right. So according to Google, the definition of capitalism is an economic and political system in which a country's trade and industry are controlled by private owners for profit rather than by the state. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the official Google definition of socialism is socialism is a political, social, and economic philosophy encompassing a range of economic and social systems characterized by social ownership of the means of production. It includes the political theories and movements associated with such systems. Socialist systems are divided into non-market and market forms. Now that's rather confusing a little bit um, because like in the context of uh, how we see socialism and capitalism now, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's pretty much like being viewed as, socialism is pretty much like viewing that the rich are taking advantage, taking advantage of the poor and pretty much benefiting from it and don't, giving Don't nobody, you mean capitalism? Sorry, sorry, capitalism, excuse me. Capitalism yeah. is taking that's advantage... That's how it's viewed, of, yes. That's yeah, how it's being taking viewed. advantage of the poor for gains for themselves and no other way for, for the poor to move up, which I, did, I strongly disagree. Like, um, not everybody, you know, who... No, not everybody has inherited wealth. You know, there's people who have, like... Pulled themselves up by the bootstraps and come no up and and, and no you know doubt. made an idea and became a millionaire you know just based on an idea and created jobs for other people and that's why I strongly believe in capitalism. I absolutely agree and I would and I'll I'll be very upfront with this. I am not an advocate of so, total socialism or of having socialism as the only form of our political philosophy, economic philosophy, socialist philosophy, although. I think that having it within those th things is very beneficial, especially through economics and, uh, well, civil, uh, I guess I would say civil rights, it, to put it bluntly. And even like social decency, like that, it, it's good to help out, you know, like, yeah. um, you know, the poor, like, I mean, the, uh, I'll make one point social right programs. here. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, it's been around since ancient Rome, you know, ancient Rome, they were, they were very, you know, uh, well, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but they were they were a republic, you know, yeah. and uh, there was a lot of people that were in power and a lot of poor, but they also had a system to take care of the poor, you know, and help them out, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, of course, when it comes to politics, you always have to get those votes in a certain way, you know, you're going to want those votes, like, from the from the lower lower classes, so to speak, right? They had their uh, political tactics, that's true, until they became an empire and that kind of stuff didn't matter as much. I mean, yeah, yeah, to a degree it did, but when it was a republic, it was definitely, um, it, w it was definitely looked upon as helping the poor and having a, having so a sort of like a, a backbone to kind of help them out, you know what I mean? Mm. Well, for me today, um, social, capitalism is something that I actually do agree with to a great extent. Like, I... I don't watch a lot of business shows. I don't learn too much about business. But one of the things that I think a lot of us watch is Shark Tank. Right. Um, and that show shows entrepreneurs who never inherited any wealth. They worked their butts off. They came up with great ideas. And they just, they did everything the way that an entrepreneur is supposed to do things. They came up with something nobody else had thought of or hadn't pursued. And they made millions, if not billions of dollars off of it. And they used that to build businesses and to help people but I am I don't think that the anger is towards people like that when it comes to today's dynamics mm -hmm. and the rise of a, a belief in socialism in America although again 
I think it's much more tapered off on the socialist side than it is on the capitalist side in America today. I, I, there are people who believe that unfettered capitalism is absolutely the way to go, whereas I think people who are more socialist don't believe in full socialism. There's some, I've heard a handful of people say that they're communists, which is full-blown socialism, although we just call it communism. Mm -hmm. But that's very few and far between, as far as I can tell, in my generation. I don't know about Gen Z. No, like, I don't, I don't think that, that it's, uh, like, trying to just, you know, equally distribute wealth. Like, it's really not like that. But I do believe that there are programs and there should be programs to help the less fortunate people out, you know, who, who really need a, need a hand in getting ahead, you know. But at the same time, it's like you have to take, you know, responsibility for, you know, why you're not getting ahead at the same time. You know, it's like it's, it's not always unfair and you're not always being exploited. I think there are people that are being exploited, but I think they allow themselves to be exploited because of their personalities and because of their choices in life and, you know, their their inambitions to kind of, like, catch up to a degree. To a degree. To a degree. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, capabilities. Like, for instance, like, I watch basketball, right? The playoffs are going on right now. Like, I'm a I'm a 5'8 Hispanic man, you know what I'm saying? Like, who cannot slam dunk a basketball, but I will not be paid the same money that LeBron James is going to be paid, you know what I mean, to play the same sport, you know, because I can't, I can't go out there and produce the same kind of, you know, well, work that he can, you know, and, and that's just simplifying it, of course. Yeah, I mean, again, people are not angry at those who have a inherent or worked hard for talent or business people who came up with something terrific or, you know, we're not angry. I don't think people who are socialists or tend towards socialism are angry about that. They just feel that the capitalist system as it is set up in America today is inherently unfair. Not because the ideas of um, capitalism are necessarily wrong, but because the rules they feel, and I would tend to agree, have been rigged against them. Against... Uh, um, and people. I don't agree with that, by the way, but go ahead. Well... Because I feel like... I mean, we I all say like, that we need connections, 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 and that's true. No, no, not connections, not connections. I feel that, like, the, the rules are even, they're equal, you know, that everybody has a chance to compete. No, I'm not saying and, everybody doesn't have a chance to compete. I'm saying that we feel the rules are rigged against us. So right. So it's not like we can't make it in spite of those rules, or because of those rules we might be able to make it, but we're saying that a lot of us are starting from a place where we're starting at the 20 yards behind the first uh, line. By the starting line, 20 but, yards behind But why is that, though? Well, sometimes... What determines that? Sometimes it's economics. Sometimes it's social privilege. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's race. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's connections. It could be a host of other things. But a lot of times, people think it's the rules, mm -hmm. which um, so, may, maybe those rules aren't set in stone, but maybe it could be something like a social taboo. But give me an example of those rules, though. Like, you say they're rules, but it's like there's no... Well, like, for example... A lot of people who are rich and powerful can use lawyers to find tax loopholes for themselves, correct? Mm -hmm. Or they can hide their money overseas in places like Bermuda Triangle, no, I'm sorry, Bermuda mm -hmm. Islands, I was gonna say, Cayman Islands, they're gonna disappear Luxembourg, all of a sudden out of nowhere. Swiss banks, things like that. They can hide their money because those are places called tax havens. And I'm like, so the rich get to hide their money from the IRS. But if I, who is a working class American, tries to do the exact same thing by hiding my money, even, let's say I don't even use the tax haven. If I, if, I, if I put my money, try to hide it from the IRS, they're going to come after me tooth and nail. But these rich guys are able to do that because they have some amount of power. But I mean, it, it's like there, there, there are certain like states and countries that, you know, there's so much regulation and taxes that you have to pay in order to stay afloat, that you kind of have to go somewhere else where they're not going to do that to you. Well, yeah, you know, do you like, really think and that... It makes it, but it, it almost makes it impossible for you to run a business because, like, okay, I have to pay this much. I, I, I not only have to pay for all the uh, all the merchandise, all the machinery that I have to do to make that product and also have the overhead to run that business to make it fair, quote-unquote, you know, for, for 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 paying my worker, when at the same time, it's like we both got to hustle too. You know what I mean? Like the the not, worker has to want to move up at the same time. Like in that company, like you can't just but, stay but, comfortable. But again, 
hiding your taxes is not the solution. And again, that's why people who are lower on the social and, ladder. And I'm not saying it's a solution. I'm just saying like that. I'm saying why why it happens. You know. But again, it's not like there's huge. We don't want complete and utter regulation of every single little thing. But we want there to be a fair shot for people. And we feel like the fair shot is not coming to us, especially people who are in the lower economic standpoint than even. Um, you, you might think of like somebody who's black is going to have a much harder handicap simply because they're black. And but that's a, but that's a different argument though. Like it has but nothing it comes to do from the social economics that comes into it for so. sure. But like that that could play a play a role. But at the same time, like there's obstacles ahead of that. You know what I mean? Like we had uh, there was Black Wall Street. You know what I mean? You had a uh, Black yeah. Wall Street, and uh, they had it was, it was a better po- uh, economy for the black community because like you had all black businesses mm-hmm. working for all black people yeah. making money for each other and working for each other you know yeah. and when that got taken away it's like okay like everything fell apart but that's that's the idea of america though like you have it to- wasn't sim- although i will say there's a, a a slight nuance to that and I, I i can see where you're going with it but there's also a problem with it because after their businesses were destroyed after their entire city was basically burned to the ground Lots of over 300 people killed that we know of. The, but the, the insurance companies refused to give money to the black owners for the destruction of their property. So what do they have left? I agree, but that's not that that doesn't apply to the context of how we do business now. Like there are so many laws and regulations against doing that to anybody. Like that was in 1921 when you know blacks had no rights and they they were forced to be in their own community and make their own economy. But now. There's hate crime. There's laws for hate crimes. There's laws for discrimination. Like you can't do that anymore. So that doesn't hold up anymore. And I'm not saying that it's that, that. I'm not trying to justify the burning of Black Wall Street. It was totally and utterly wrong. But again, like we're not in 1921. We're in 2021. You know what I mean? Good point on that. Um, but again, uh, uh, like if I, if, if, I still I, if you're discriminating, the, sy- the system yeah. is still skewed towards white Americans. And I'm not saying that to say that all white Americans have economic uh, uh, power. I'm saying that it's skewed towards us to the fact that if I was to go into a bank and ask for a loan, they're going to look at my credit score. And if my credit score is exactly as good, they're going to give me. They might give me a loan depending on how much risk I, I pose. Now, if a black person, again, this is based off of research that's been done before this. Um, mm-hmm. I can't name any specific ones simply because my memory is not that good on economic stuff but if a black person with the exact same credit comes in he's gonna have a harder time getting that loan based on the societal and institutionalized um prejudice that exists within our social fabric i agree to a degree I, i agree to a degree but like really like when it comes down to business like money talks like if a black guy walks into a bank and he says, I have, you know, this much money and this idea to do this thing. I was like, does it benefit you to help me out? And I'm like, if, if your money speaks for you, but then that's you. Be able to. And you're not. No, I, th- I think, no, that's a businessman. A businessman but will not, take well, a risk on somebody who, again, if you have the proof that, okay, if we lived in I, have, the vacuum, I have the yes. credit, I have the credit. No, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm talking as, as an individual, you know, like we're going to take race out of it. As an individual, you go in there, I have but this much money. we can't take race out of it. Race exists. Not, al- not always. No, no, not always. But at the same time, when it comes to business, um, I think it always comes down to, like, what your track record is as far as, like, what your finances are. And that's where a bank is going to look at you. I'm saying, I'm not saying that a bank is not always going to be, is not going to be racist at all. But you have people that are working for banks of all cultures. You know, you have black, white, Italian, you know, uh, Russian people, like, that I've dealt with at banks. And we're very we're very diverse now like it's not just like you're going into a bank and only white people work there that is true but again america has a history with racism that i mean the civil rights movement wasn't that long ago it was like about 60 70 years ago and there's people still alive who remember that and either they remember it with fondness that they won or they remember it with hatred that they lost Obviously, okay. depending on where on the spectrum you are. So, but social, uh, but again, that's why. Let's go um, back to socialism exactly. Yeah, right? let's, I mean, let's leave the, the 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 racism aside for now, and let's go. But that's like, why socialism the, has a, a tendency to be more popular among the young people because they don't see race as being that big of a deal to them, which is why socialism ties them together more because it's like no, well, we're the same class, and we have to fight against the higher class. Well, look, 
uh, capitalism doesn't look at it as a race thing, it's about a money thing. Like, is your money okay? Like, are you going to help me make more money? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, if you're, like, why do you think, like, you know, like, so many, like, entertainment, you know, industries or, you know, television networks, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're a black guy, you know what I'm saying? You have a great shtick, you have a great, you know, uh, uh, thing thing that, that I can market, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to owe you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay you this much money so I can make money with you. And it's a thing, you know what I mean? Like, even if, yeah, when it's entertainment, when it's music, you know what I mean? You had a, uh, uh, we could go with music with like NWA, you had a Jewish guy, you know what I'm saying, who, who saw these guys from the ghetto, NWA, you know what I'm saying? He said, I believe in you to make money, so we're going to make money together. And that's capitalism. Yeah, I guess you know? so. It's like, uh, why, why would this white guy who's Jewish invest in these people to make money if it wasn't in his interest to make himself money too? And that's where my argument for capitalism is, you know, like he took these guys out of the ghetto. He made them. Dr. Dre now started with NWA and is now one of one of the few black billionaires out there, you know, who started from the bottom. And, and he had an idea. He has beats, you know, headphones by Dre. And he produced records for so many other people and uh, made made music, you know, with with NWA and his solo artist. And he was given that opportunity by some white Jewish guy, you know what I mean? It's like, where, where would he be without that opportunity now? You know, and it's like, how how can you how can you downplay that? You know, you can't trivialize that, like it happened. I, I am not trying to trivialize it, believe me. I'm not saying that capital, capitalism can't work. I believe capitalism can work. I'm just saying that the capitalism, I, I'm gonna move aside from where I was because we, in, in America, we're, we are an existing country. We have our existing structures. We have our existing social status structures, ladders, whatever you want to call it. And we also have our economic things, our political things. They're all coming together in these things, in this system. And so it's not a vacuum where an individual will be uh, influenced by only one thing or by two things. They're going to be influenced by everything they've done. They're going to see their the, everything through their, their eyes, which are a culture a cultural eyes a cultural lens mm -hmm. and so whatever that culture has been however they view it is how they're going to see it and not everybody's going to see it the same way even if it's the tiniest little thing that's different it's going to be there it's going to magnify that like a lens but I've but social um the difference between what i think of capitalism should be and social is that I think capitalism needs to be way more regulated than it's regulated now, especially when it comes to the power. I think that it's so. I, I think it, it, it's a it's a moral responsibility to help our less fortunate in our country. You know, wh whatever you know, race you might be or what culture you might come no from. Rule leaves. Yes, you should definitely do that. But it's never going to be equal because of skills, and because of let's say like just mental fortitude and just bravery like you're gonna you're gonna want to risk something you know to make something happen like you can't just sit there and be scared and be like well you know the the devil that i know is better than the devil that i don't which is like it's not true you know like you you got to get out there and risk something you know like everybody everybody didn't become a millionaire just by luck you know what i mean like and if your if your family you know like came up with an idea made a bunch of money and now you're in a family that you inherited wealth from like is that your fault like you know and, they, and why is it somebody's fault why are they in perpetual poverty you know like it's 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 it's, it's the you have to ask that question like you know like people people make bad choices people make good choices and i think that but there's also a system that you have to work within or without and if that system is not in favor of you moving forward then you're gonna face a lot more obstacles like, but I gave you an example of race already with the NWA but that's, thing. But, that's but, there's, just, but, but that's, there's other ones. There, there, there's other ones. There's, I, I, there's I, movies. Fo I focused on race in this case because socialism is more about the social, uh, focuses just as much on social equality as it does economic equality. And the difference between capitalism and socialism to me is that capitalism is about making as much money as you can, as quickly as you can, and making sure that that money stays with you and your and your cabal but or your group cabal sounds kind of sinister and people who are capitalists aren't bad people most of the time they're but just you make them sound people. evil <laughs> i think because that i think that we have a we don't i think we have a, a, a quasi aristocracy right now mm -hmm. where we've got people who either inherited money uh gained money through illicit means 
or who became powerful through connections but don't really have much more to offer than that. So, and that they dominate our political landscape. So I look at them and I'm like, what are you actually doing for us, the American workers, the American people who are the majority? And I, 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 I put like 90% of the American people in there. And obviously there's a big difference in wealth gap. So I'm like, why do you have so much power and so much money when the rest of us are like struggling? And it's not necessarily because a lot of them came up with good ideas. I think it comes down to smart choices. You know, I mean, that we've seen so many, you know, artists and entertainers, you know, who are minorities, um, who got to the pinnacle of making so much, like, money and fame and, and, and stardom, and they squandered their money away and didn't make good choices. You know, and I'm saying the opportunity is always there to get to that level. But, like, when do you take accountability for your own actions and not investing in yourself and making good choices when it's... Uh, 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 either it's a cultural thing or an individual thing to where you didn't invest and you didn't protect your, your, your money because you just didn't know any better. It's just a little bit of ignorance like on your end. You know, you have to take accountability as an individual. I'm not saying that there isn't individual accountability, but the problem is is that who does the, who, who, what does the system go after in terms of individual responsibility? Who does it point to and say you're individually responsible for your own problems but then reaches out a hand to help others? What's no, you should you should reach out and hand but, but, to help but, but, others. Who is the system choosing to help, and who is it choosing to put the well, responsibility? on? You have to give me an example of why they're choosing. Uh, who, who is choosing who over well, who? Well, we why. bailed. Out, look at what Obama did to bail out Wall Street and mm -hmm. the big and the big banks. Now, I think with the auto industry, he made a good decision because a lot of workers were going to lose their jobs. I don't know enough about it to give more than a definitive answer of. Uh, I think he made the right choice in that case, but bailing out Wall Street, who literally. Um, basically gambled with consumer money, money that Americans... That's what, they always, that's what Wall Street does. Yeah, but, they're, but the, they're not supposed to gamble with our money that's in the bank. They're supposed to gamble with their own money. Mm -hmm. And they gambled with our money and lost out big. They gave out loans that they knew were insecure so that they could foreclose on other people and take their houses and sell them again. And so it's like, if you know these are not only risky, but potentially... Uh, life altering for people in that sense. Okay. Then, why are you taking those gambles with our money? Use but, your own money. But if those you're so are the rich. established. Those are the those are the established people. Like, where where do we go into? But that's my point. Where do we He's, go into like anybody being exploited who is poor? Like. Well, again, I think that um, the government should regulate businesses to a certain degree. Obviously, there's certain taxes they need to pay, and I think it depends on how much your business is making. In my opinion. Or as a indi rich individual, if you inherit a s certain amount of money, like say you inherit over $500 million from your family, maybe you should pay a small tax on that. Like it doesn't need to be a huge thing. Like you, even a 1% tax on $500 million, that's a lot of money to go into the government coffers just because you inherited okay. the $500 million. So, so it's a very, and, and that's my thing is that um, there are certain regulations that the government should put on businesses just like it does on people. And I think that there are times when people who are the labor force for certain businesses should come together and form a union, especially, in my opinion, when their lives could be put on the line for the work they're doing, like the coal mines, the gas companies, um, oil rigs, uh, ocean work, where if your lives are put on the line to a great degree, you should have a say in how the business is run or at least in how you get paid and everything. The workers should have the ability to negotiate. So do you think that the workers should want to stay there indefinitely and just hope for the best and, you know, wish, you know, prepare for the worst? Or do you think you should have some ambition to move up and move out of there? Well, that's the thing is that a union has this thing called seniority. So you can move up within the union mm -hmm. and um, depending on how long you've been there. So it's not like you're never going to get anywhere. I'm saying that, again, that's the negotiations. But I think that's in any business, though, union or not, like you're going to move up. But a union you... has a sense of, uh, has an official, um, uh, um, what's the word? Ah. An official status mm -hmm. that non-union workers don't have. Like workers can get together and say they're part of a union, but if they've never officially done anything or they come in as individuals and they say, I'd like to move forward, it all depends on the business uh, itself deciding whether they want you to or not. And you have really no power in that moment other than to rely on them. You have your own agency, yes, but if you don't have the right 
bargaining tools at your disposal, then they could just say, yeah, screw you, I'm going to pick my favorite instead because they're going to do, they're going to lick my boots. Well, so if the worker... They could do that, or they could hire you, they could pick you because you're a hard worker, but you're basically at their mercy. But if the blue-collar worker is being exploited, does, does he not have any options to go anywhere else or even try to it, get him? It depends on not, circumstances. But can, let me finish. No, no, it's, it's not all circumstances, though. Not always, not all the no. time. Because, like, again, if you're being exploited, you can say, like, okay, what are my options? Who is the competitor? Who can I work for? And what is my plan to get ahead and move up and educate myself and get better at my trade or learn a new trade, you know, to maybe finally own my own practice, own my own, you know, factory, own my own, you know, business of some sorts to get myself out of this rut. Part and, of that is information. And it's, sometimes but, people but it's don't individual. Have, sometimes people are not privy to that kind of information or have never been taught that that information is even a lot, even around. Like, there's a lot of places, um, especially in poorer areas, um, rural areas, inner city areas, um, uh, other countries, that that, I don't that, that information is not literally not available to them because it's not coming Every, in. Everyone, everyone, in the, everyone, and everyone, around everyone, around everyone in America has a smartphone. They have... They have access to all the same information and right. all the right. same, all the same, uh, you know, uh, things that, that everybody else does. But whether then you, you whether, also need resources. Whether you, whether you choose, you do to a degree need resources, but you have to create resources. They don't just pop up and just say, "Hey, here's a job." But then, what if you, you what if you need your resources just to take care of yourself or your family? You can't use it for something so else because go, you're so desperate. But you have to go find resources, though. You can't just expect them to, to just fall on your lap. You have to. And then you have to hope that those to, resources don't bite you in the butt. They might, or they might not. But that's life, you know. I mean, Again, life I, is unfair, think, you know. Like I'm get, saying that there needs to be protections. It doesn't have to be like. Again, I'm not. I'm not. A, I do not think that there's ever going to be equal outcome for every single person with whatever economic thing they pursue. I don't think that ever, or even social things like, a guy, one guy could ask out five girls, and get rejected <laughs> by all of them, and right. another guy could ask out five girls and get yeses from all of them. No, my my thing is like there's equal opportunity, but there's not going to be equal I, outcome because it comes down to the individual I, and how that's why a lot how of, hard are you working for it and how how much in effort did you put into it but that's to why, get your outcome though. Like that's, that's why what, a lot of younger people matters, are though. angry because they feel they are putting in all their effort, but, but not enough. But, but not all of them are. No, 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 no. I, I feel I am. No, not you. I, that's you though. I'm talking but about. I think I see the group. People, like you're, you're not you, like your group though. You're not like your group. You don't know that. You're different. You're no, you're different. You're you you're an indi- you're an individual. Like the whole group does not speak for you. No, but you're neither yourself. do I speak for the whole group. You sh- you don't, and you shouldn't. And the group doesn't speak for just me. Exactly. That's the, the point group, I'm trying to but that's, make. But that's the thing is that the group I I'm around are working as hard as they can and yet they feel they can't get ahead not because they don't want to get ahead but because they feel stifled that they can't get the jobs that are promised to them they can't get the um but relief they need and they can't get the opportunities they need because they don't have the connections that others who are in a higher status have that's true it's harder for people who are already established but you no people you, who you, aren't no no oh yeah who aren't established you're right but how are you going to establish yourself though? Like nobody who's established just got there unless they were, you know, inherited money from their already rich uncles or, or mommy and daddy. But what about their mom and dad? How did they get there? Like they didn't like everybody else, like they had to start from somewhere. Like their wealth just didn't wake up to mm. them. Their family had to get that wealth through some tough means of either creating a product or idea or a business that got them there and then their kids benefited from it, which I think that's all fine and good. You know, it's all about good choices. You know, like if you're so desperate to get, you know, to get out of your situation, then you will work hard as hell to get out of that situation and put yourself in a better situation. And then you make plans for your kids. You make plans for their kids, you know, if, if you can, you know, because you don't ever want them to taste the, depra- the, the desperation that you tasted, you know. And I think that's okay. I don't think that that's unfair. It's just, again, it comes down to working for it. Well, again, there's a, you're right. Everybody is built differently, and everybody responds to high stress, uh, social, economic, and political situations differently. So, like, I remember reading this one article where this Marine talked about how he felt people were complaining too much because he was working three jobs, and he was still going to college, and he was doing well. For him, he was doing what he could, and he was uh, finally getting ahead. 
And somebody responded to his article saying, yes, you're doing that, but are you everybody? Everybody is built differently. Everybody has different circumstances. And um, depending on your circumstances and depending on who you are as a human being and the system that you're facing in that particular place, it could be different. Like all of America is not the same in how they deal with these things. Like different states, different localities, they deal with things in a different way than the federal government, which is why people, I would say, are a little afraid of the federal government because it forces all the states to follow a same code that, that, that everybody else has to follow, which is like, why should I have to follow what somebody in New York does when I'm in uh, Kansas? Well, I'm going to bring it back to, to race for a minute because um, I think that there is a form of checks and balances within the system that allows minorities to get ahead you know, outside of that idea of, you know, that white people, you know, are going to just benefit because of being white. So I dated a girl about two and a half years ago, you know, black girl, you know, grew up, you know, poor with, with, uh, you know, her family and things like that, big family. And she was able to go to college and get a, get a scholarship and, uh, get college for, well, not for free, but for very low. And she got a degree in cyber science, cybersecurity, you know, and, cool. Graduated, is running a team, you know, and for 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 uh, you know, for a bank, you know, mm -hmm. their cybersecurity, and makes one hundred thirty thousand dollars a year, you know, and is making great money and got ahead because, you know, again, like you applied and we're gonna like they're, they're gonna give you a scholarship because like okay, we need to help out minorities, we need more more minority more, more minorities in our college, and we're gonna go ahead and you know give you that, and she got that and she got ahead. And, it, it, and I feel like that's a, that's a form of checks and balances. I mean, like my niece, she's half Hispanic and she has a, you know, Hispanic uh, name. So she's probably going to get into a good college. You know, that's going to help her out a lot, you know, like, but if she doesn't try, then it's not never going to happen for her. You know, it's about choices, but there are opportunities for minorities, you know, in colleges and picking the right career. And if you pick the wrong career, I mean, like there, there's a lot of people who never figure it out. You know, like sometimes you go to college and you study philosophy and don't get a job and you wonder why you don't have a job you know or you study computer science which i love philosophy and i, I would have went to college and studied philosophy i still wouldn't have a job right now because it's not going to get me a job and there's too much of an influx but if i go in there for either medicine law or you know uh technology i'm probably going to get a really good job because i made the right choice and there's a lot of people who who just take a gamble and and, and you kind of have to take that into account do you understand? I get it. I just think that that's kind of generalizing it a little too much. And again, um, you mentioned minorities and helping out minorities. And again, you're pointing to very specific instances, and it's a good thing to bring up. It's a very good thing to do that. Well, you brought it up. I did too. I meant the opportunities that are being presented to minorities. Correct. But again, those are to individuals and to small numbers. I, I think that socialism is more attractive to the younger generation because it encompasses a much larger group. It encompasses an entire class of people rather than individuals. Because we look at it as, we're not just trying to get individuals ahead or a small number of people ahead to quote unquote represent us as they're the hardest workers. We want all of you to know that we are hard workers. Maybe we differ on how we get there, but we get there. And we want to help an entire class get out of this sticky situation we feel ourselves are in against a upper class that is in our minds, and I would say probably so, are taking the best for themselves and making sure that we're kept out. Well, I mean, again, like, I still stick by my argument that, you know, the opportunity is always there and it comes down to the individual's choices, you know, and it's like, if you're gonna say like, man, I'm poor, but I'm never going to ask why I'm poor or why I'm suffering. And I'm never going to try to like fix, fix it based on like, you know, what are the, what, what are the things that I have to iron out and fix? You know, maybe, maybe I, I have, you know, children, you know, maybe, you know, I made a bad choice by having multiple children and, and I got divorced or I have multiple, you know, partners, uh, children from multiple, you know, partners and I made a mistake and now that's going to make my life harder. But who, who is the person that's keeping you from moving ahead aside from your individual choices that made life a little bit harder for you and the other person didn't 
And I'm, I'm, and that's a real question. Like you know. But what? again, I go back to the younger generation and the feeling of it's a solidarity and not an individual. I understand, and, but and, the, and and we have a problem when individuals uh, come from our class in our minds and go up to the next class, especially to the very richest, and then they just shut the door of opportunity behind them, meaning that they cut off the way they got there. So that nobody else can use that. I don't, I don't agree with that, though. But that's but that's that's what we feel that people are doing. Yeah, but feelings feelings don't don't determine that as fact, though. But it determines where you turn to for answers. So, like a lot of people in the um, political right wing turn to people like Donald Trump. They turn to people like Ron DeSantis and uh, things like that because they touted the idea that the establishment, the political establishment, the economic establishment, not only left them behind, but is cheating them. And that's a very popular message because they do feel that way. And that's why they, a lot of them are stuck by Trump, even if we think he's a little nuts. But well, we think he's nuts and a lot of like, and that's poor, why a lot of, a lot of poor white people support Donald Trump when he's a rich white guy, you know what yeah, I'm saying? It was like where, where, where they have to blame immigrants and minorities for their plight, but, but it's not true. But that's why a lot of the leftists went to Bernie Sanders, yeah, but, because we had the same feeling that the upper class was was uh, oppressing us, in a way. But how, But you still haven't told me how they're oppressing you, though. Not necessarily through, you know, shutting us up or anything, but by playing with a, 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 a fixed deck, you could say, that they hold the best cards, the political establishment, the economic establishment. They hold the best cards. They made the rules. And so we have to play by those rules, but we're trying to change the rules by changing the deck of cards. And they're saying, no, we're going to use this deck of cards only. Don't even try to change it. And if you do, we're going to but I don't, make I don't, sure you never win another election. I don't understand the example of like how they're shutting you out, though, or well, shutting, one people, way, shutting people out, though. Well, like, Bernie what? Sanders is a great example, politically speaking, because... I mean, one thing you have to do to get um, your message out is you need to buy television ads. Now, obviously, the Internet has changed that some, but the majority of people still get their political news um, on the largest issues through te television and commercials and ads. And the networks are privately owned. They're not owned by the government. So you have to pay to get airtime. You don't, And whoever has the most money is going to get the most airtime, which Bernie Sanders did not overcome that, especially because his ideas, even though they're popular with the with the base, with the with the voters, is not popular with those that hold the political power because it targets them. So you brought up Bernie Sanders, and you always champion Bernie Sanders as this great, you know, hero. I and see him as somebody who sticks to his principles. Okay. Yes. So would you say that Bernie Sanders is somebody who came from uh, humble beginnings, humble background? Absolutely. Okay. And how is he a millionaire now? He wrote a book. He wrote a book. He became very popular. He became a politically recognized icon. He became the most popular political figure in the United Did States. Did the system keep him down? No, but again, I, no, I just no, emphasize no, no, that. He, I'm just saying he wrote a book. Okay, cool. But he came from humble beginnings, and yeah. he was poor. He had a you know he was a career politician now, but. Well, Who kept, how, how did he get kept down? Like, but he, he always kept fighting against every, the political every, but, establishment. No, I, no, I get that. I get that. But again, like, how was he? You know, if he came from such humble beginnings, like, how was he kept down by people at the top who were richer than him? Like, well, well, again, it's not that he as an individual was kept down. And again, I'm not saying that individuals can't make it. I'm absolutely saying individuals can make it. Mm -hmm. The problem is that it's not a large number of people in any way, shape, or form. It's like a handful of individuals, and if they agree with the political establishment as they stand right now, how things are right now, you are way more likely to get ahead. So if you're willing to leave behind the ideals and the principles of um, trying to better everything, trying to better things for larger numbers of people rather than just yourself, that's what we, uh, the socialism feels like, that you're leaving your class behind completely. You're saying, I'm going to benefit me, screw the rest of you. And but that's, it, and again, it's not necessarily correct. It I probably isn't correct, but that's the feeling. Me as capitalism, you know, arguing for capitalism is that, you know, like I don't agree on the level of a group. You know, like I have to pay my rent. I have to pay my taxes. The group is not going to pay my taxes. No. The group, my group is not going to pay my rent. They're not going to pay my cell phone bill. They, if I go broke, they go on. 
You know what I mean? So, and you know, I can I can sit there and be like, oh, well, with me, somebody help me out. But that's and the thing. Is, is the is, is my own group going to help me out? Like if well, I go broke, or, and if they and if they succeed, like. But that's the thing. That's what they're trying to change, so that even if something happens to you, there might be a social safety net. Like maybe not for every single little thing that could go wrong. So you take it. So you take but the like money Medicare from. But like Medicare for all, if something happens to you, no, today, I, I, you I, agree get with, sick. I agree with that. No, no, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing about that. I'm, I'm arguing about the economics of it. Like you know. For, yeah, but that's the economic. Free Medicare. Free Medicare is fine for for me as far. But that as, is like, an you know, economic pitfall. I get if something it. happens I get it. to you and you have to go to the emergency room or to a hospital but, for an expensive surgery. Right now, if you do that and you don't have insurance of any kind, they will bill you to hell. But the topic out. right now is about how I make money and why I'm not making money. You know what I mean? Like that's the topic. Like we can we can get into you know med- we can get into medical insurance and free free health care for people and all that stuff. Great, but, we, but, we, but if but if we stay on topic with the economics of it, like that's it's economic to a degree, but it's still it's still not the the the, the root of the idea that we're talking about right now. Is like how you make money. Well, giving free health care to somebody is not does, doesn't benefit doesn't explain like why somebody's making more money uh, more money than you are. But that's that's well we're talking about the philosophy of socialism versus capitalism. For not, sure. Not how somebody makes more money. Obviously, if you work longer hours, you work harder. You 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 man. There's so many different ways you can make more money than somebody else. But I mean, rise up in, in society as well. Well. You can start your own business. I mean, like that is true, but uh, uh, there a lot of times you wonder how do you rise up, and sometimes you look at the system in place today, and especially the again, I go back to the younger generation. We look at it and we say the system is inherently rigged, not because it's an evil system or it doesn't care about individuals or groups at all, but because it it caters to those that will agree with the status quo that will not upset the apple cart. Now that's perfectly normal for any society to do that but we feel like the rules are comp- are so rigged against us that we're not given a fair shot to make our case and again i go back to political ads if you have all the screen time let's say you get 90 percent of the screen time and uh somebody like bernie or elizabeth warren only gets 10 percent. who are people going to hear more of? who's going whose speech is going to get drowned out more and that's what these campaign donations that come from these lobbyists and rich and corporations are doing. They're drowning out other speech. Even if everybody else is able to speak, just because you can't hear them. So you, you're saying that the poor will stay at the bottom because there is some system in place that will keep them there regardless of how hard they fight. Not regardless of how hard they fight, but as a group, I think, yes, there is a certain amount of that going on, especially in communities where there is a systemic amount of poverty. And again, you look at the rural areas, you look at inner cities, you look at the edges of our um, society, and you look at like places where you have homelessness, and and you wonder, these are some of these people are really decent people. Like some of them might have mental problems, some of them might be addicted to drugs, but they're fairly decent people. What happened? And some of them just lost their homes, they got divorced. It could be anything, and so there's no safety net. And I think would. you should take care of the homeless, but again, it's like if, if you're just making, you know, five bucks an hour, or if you're just, you know, waiting tables all your life, you know what I mean? Like, well, then... What do people like doing that? People like, some people just like serving so, other people. So you're, going to, so you're going to only be, you know, compensated for that kind of, you know, work, you know? But I'm so, saying... But I'm it's saying, like, are you going to pay a heart surgeon the same thing you're going to pay a waiter? Like, Come on, dude, that's a... It's a, it's, I know it's over. over uh, it's a bullshit argument. But, it's a, but I, I know it's, I'm, I'm simplifying it like to a, to a large degree. But it's like, how do you how do you how do you how do you wait how do you fix how do you balance things like what's, obviously what's because fair? labor has value. Mm-hmm. But again, it's not about how much you're paying one person versus another based on different jobs. That's completely different. Obviously, that's a bullshit but argument. But it's so. But it's socialism versus capitalism. No, no, no. Though. Socialism is about within those contexts. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're in the context of a medical profession, and you're working, let's say, as a private surgeon for, I, I want to bring it to Medicare for all for a second. Let's say that the government does take care of your medical needs and mm-hmm. pays your medical bills outside of a handful of things. Let's say that there's these some private doctors who decide, no, I'm going to have my own private practice. And I'm going to charge this much, this much, this much, this much for this, 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 and this. And they get people to sign up. Now, I don't think the government should cover cosmetic surgery for, like, getting a 
Like I get drugs? it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like life, old, like, like life uh, threatening things. Yes. Yeah, like um, only, and so if somebody who wants to do that wants to go and pay that, I think that's fine. If it's just for you know uh, looks. Rather get, than medical. Right, yeah, okay. So, cool. like, you're get, that guy's obviously going to have a private practice. Mm -hmm. But if it's a life-threatening thing or more, more commonly it's just a life-altering thing. I agree with you that, like, you should not let people die because they're poor. Like, yes, I agree on the or socialist. Or bankrupt. On the, on the socialist side, I will agree with you on that. As a human person, as a human being, like, you should not sit there and be like, oh, well, you know, you don't have enough medical insurance and you don't have enough money to pay for this surgery. Uh, sorry, you know, you're going to get a coffin. It's like, no, that, that's not right. But we're talking about as far as like monetary gains, like as an individual. Like, yes, you sh definitely should be taken care of by the government if you're dying or if you're sick. I definitely agree with that. We should definitely pay taxes into that. Most definitely. Like, I don't argue against that. I'm talking about personal responsibility as far as like, you know, like, well, why, like can't, why, can't, why can't, why can't I afford my children? Like, why am I having so many children, like, you know what I'm saying, outside of my means of how much money I can make? Like, that, those, are the arguments, that that those are the arguments that I make, you know what I'm saying, for, uh, for capitalism for personal, and against socialism. For personal choices, there's obviously education is one. For sure. Which a lot of people are not taught the right things, not because they come from necessarily evil environments or bad environments. They but come from bad they, parenting. Not necessarily. Like, sometimes it's the, uh, the, the town you're in. It could be that a town that has never... Cultural? Yeah, it's a yeah. cultural thing to a degree, like different localities believe in different things like you could say that california is one of the most liberal states in the in the entire united states it may not be most liberal yeah, yeah but that doesn't mean they don't have their lip the, these areas that aren't very conservative mm -hmm. it just means that the major the state is controlled politically by uh blue instead of red mm -hmm. but that could easily shift given the new social dynamics that people grow up yeah so again it all depends it's just a difference of degrees of where people stand but the point is that so like <laughs> I remember the story this is a true story about this uh, town in uh, Florida 68% Trump voters and their last grocery store went out of business and their nearest Walmart I believe was about 30 miles away just to get cheap food and uh, you know uh, not the best stuff so the town mayor town council decided you know what screw it we're going to open up our own grocery store and the town is going to control it. the council we're going to control it. so they took a loan out of a bank they opened up their own grocery store and now the mayor when he's walking down the street he gets asked hey do you think you could order this kind of milk to the store and so that's actually he says don't call it socialism it's just the town's taking care of its own but that is somewhat socialist it's a public grocery store and there are public banks in uh, North Dakota I'm glad you brought that Walmart, you know, um, situation up because I feel that these big monopolies do need to be controlled a little bit more. Like in, in that regard, like, yes, I'm a little bit more socialist on that side because you have these big monopolies like Walmart, Amazon that are putting all these small businesses out of business. And, you know, you're not just taking away their business and their money, but you're also robbing the community of its, like, you know... Lifeline. Lifeline, you know what I mean? Like, everybody, like, needs... Like, you go to the grocery store, you go to the music store, you go to to, to, to go buy art, you know, you go to buy furniture, and now it's just like, no, like... But then again, it, it's like the, the market sets the fucking, like, mm -hmm. excuse my language, the market sets the pace, though, you know what hey, I'm saying? Like, we, dic we, we, dictate, we dictate why these things... Like, we're, we're giving these things the these companies are money like we're choosing to go to amazon and not going to to you know to go to the clothing store we're choosing to get our groceries delivered to us now instead and, of going out to get and, and we're responsible like the, but the people, question is why do we do we do it only because it's cheaper do we do no, it only because, because it's convenience convenient? it's convenient and it's cheaper both of those reasons like we're lazy <laughs> and now we're killing you know what 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 makes our what makes our communities thrive you know what i'm saying what brings our lifeline and our blood to like we're 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 very separated from each other now because we do that like you know like i, I believe in small businesses should exist because i'm a capitalist you know but you know I, i'm i'm a capitalist to a degree where i'm just like dude don't don't bring monopolies in here it's like dude you're now we're just isolated and lonely just sitting at home and online shopping with our fat asses and just <laughs> fucking just 
just getting picking, you know picking Pringles out of our folds. Exactly, like just it, it it sucks, you know, and and that's the part where I will agree with you on that. That like it's it's really killing America, like in in the sense of not just America, because like the world is doing it. Yeah, America. I mean, I'm sorry, Amazon is the shipping shipping things all over the world, you know, and that because it's cheaper, it's more convenient, you don't got to get your ass up, you don't got to leave your house, but and now you don't want to leave your house, so now, like, look, movie theaters are closing, because now we can actually stream a movie that's in theaters right now and don't have to leave our fucking house. Although I do believe and I hope that movie theaters never go completely out of business. I'm, I'm with you. Because there is nothing that compares to going to the movie theater and seeing a movie live with a well, crowd and seeing everything on the big screen. I, I agree with that. And I totally Especially agree with the anime movies. It. Hey, well, you know, we differ in taste, but like I understand where you're coming from. Nah, I'm not judging. But, um, you know, like, one of the biggest things, like, uh, that I used to love, and I still love to do now, like, luckily, there's still a few small record stores around, but I love music, and I love going to the record store, like, as a kid, and even as an adult now, like, when I go there, it's such a community where it's just, like, the, like the, the person knows your name, he knows what you like, he, you know, you have a conversation about, like, what artist, you know what I'm saying, like, did good things, and what artist was, uh, what, what artist influenced a new artist coming up, and you should go check this out, and you're like, all right, man, I'll see you next week. You know, it's like you go to the, uh, you remember uh, Blockbuster? It was such a community yeah. thing. It was such a great thing, you know, because you go there and all these movie nerds would just talk to you about movies. And, and, and I never had that. Sorry. I mean, we did I, go to Blockbuster, but I don't remember any of us being very good at communicating. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, you just run into people, like, checking out a movie and they just talk to you. It's the same thing, like, when you're at the grocery store and somebody's looking at something and you just strike up a small conversation and it might turn into something and it might not. But for you me, have that opportunity for me, to it's do the it. Store. Same, th yes. That's why I love going to Barnes and Noble. That's why I love going to, uh, you know, not Books a Million because they screwed me. But what, what was that? Second and Charles, you know, Second and Charles. I haven't been, been there, there yet. Now I have. Second and Charles is like nerd heaven. Like it's amazing. It has comic books, it has toys, no you go and it there. has books. Thank you. And it has records. It has records for crying out loud. So I go there and I talk to the people that work there, man, and they 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 sell you and they give you this idea of something new. Where it's like you go online and now. You just buy it, and you have to read somebody's review without even really getting to know their, their personality, or even if, like, you know, you can just read their it review cuts and you tell off you that. A personal experience. Exactly. So, like, that's that's where capitalism is kind of killing it off, like, with monopolizing these these kind of companies from just cutting off the experience. And um, yeah, that's how I feel. And yeah. and it'll only get worse. Like, you know, malls closed. I mean, when I was a teenager, we used to go to the mall, you know, and just. That's where we socialize. You know, you yeah. go to the, you go everywhere. You go to the food court. You actually socialize. But now, we're limited to just everybody loves to FaceTime. Everybody loves to game online. I'm certain that once people can go back to the malls without their masks, I'm certain that once this quarantine is officially over. Oh, they stopped going before that. No, no, no. I, I think that it'll reopen up because a lot of people are just sick of being stuck, and a lot of business, a lot of people are going to be able to start, hopefully, start new businesses within these different places because yes, a lot of places have closed. But a lot of places are going to have a chance to open, hopefully. So we'll see about that. But I think we should uh, bring our concluding argument to this, which is um, we've, we've come to agree on certain things. Like, mm -hmm. I do agree that capitalism is a fundamental part of our nation, and it should stay that way. But again, from a socialism point, I think that we need to have the government uh, regulating or running certain things that private businesses are running right now. And, it, and it's because of that that we have a lot of our economic problems. So I am not a socialist, but I am a, cap a regulated capitalist. Okay, you know what? That's fair. I agree with that. I, I can you're, definitely you're, see you're on that. you're way more similar to me in that sense than you give yourself sure. credit for. I, I agree with that, actually, you know, because, again, like, you start, we start to talk about these things and we let our feelings get involved, but at the same time, it's like, we're seeing the same the same end, but like not reaching that conclusion, because we're so fixated on the ideas of like these little details, you know what mm. I mean, here and there. And again, like I believe in you know, hey, the government should not let you die and be sick because you're poor, yep. and they shouldn't let you be homeless. Mm -hmm. You definitely should be given a hand to be able to compete, and not just be told like, hey man, like go figure it out, you know. So yeah, that's our conclusion, man, and I definitely agree with you on that. And we can meet halfway on there. Definitely, my friend. All right. Boom. Another great discussion. Yes, definitely. If you guys li did like this discussion, just give this uh, video a big thumbs up. Subscribe. And please share this video with your friends if you think that it will help open up more discussion. So 
Thank you very much. Charlie Black and Carlos, out. Thank you.